Well, hey there, folks. I hope you're all doing well in these strange and weird times that we're currently living in. So I, we got something a little bit different for you today. Uh, we're actually going to be streaming an episode of the Bobcast on on the Bob and Katie show. We normally host this podcast on our Patreon page, but honestly, I just had so much fun with it. I just wanted to put it on here so everybody had a chance to listen and, and, and hopefully have as much fun as I did. So without further ado, I want to introduce our guest, Chuck Staten, on the Bobcast. Oh, and don't worry, Katie will be back very, very soon. Chuck, how are you, buddy? How you doing, man? You know, I'm. Everybody says this. Everybody always goes, "Oh, I'm excited to have you on the show." And, and I think a lot of times people don't mean it, but I legitimately am excited to talk to you. <laughs> Thank you, bud. I'm, man, do you say that to people and you don't mean it? That's not very nice. <laughs> uh, well, we don't we don't do guests a whole bunch with our stuff, right? Um, okay, it's, it's very very far and few between. But as right. far as you go, I, I'm curious to know how much into our relationship you are versus how much into it I am. <laughs> well, it's funny. Like, I'm trying to think. Like, I, at some point, we added each other on Facebook, and I know that you had something to do with my Carreras podcast, which uh -huh. I was on a year ago or two years ago. And Oh, you were on man, his podcast? Yeah, yeah. When my band, when my band, uh, my, I have a band called Senior Discount. We were signed to Paper and Plastic by Vinny from Less yeah. Than Jake. Yeah. And when our album came out, uh, I wrote to Mike and I was like, hey, man, like you're a big influence on us. And uh, and I, I have a great podcast. I'd love to come on. And he was like, yeah, dude, let's do it. And he had me on the podcast. That is out of control. So one of the things that I was excited about is there. there's so many weird things that I keep seeing online that I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. we have that in common. Oh, we have that in common. I had no idea you were on his show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When, so what when else have you was seen? It? Um, so we got let me let me think. It must have been I think our album came out in was it 2019? Let me <laughs> let me let me look real quick. Let me look. Um we we basically came out with an album. Okay, so it was August 19th, 2018 is when I was on Shut up. So I Carrera probably podcast. I edited your episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There this you go. Is, this is out of control, man. That that's very very strange. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I okay. I I don't really get on Facebook and and mess around too much. The only thing that I ever do is I get on and I push my stuff. Um, right. I, I'm probably a horrible friend to be friends with on Facebook. <laughs> yeah. I only see things when I open it up, and for some reason, I, I randomly see your stuff. So, like, I don't go searching for it, but you'll post something, and I'm like, "Oh, that's that's awesome! I dig that." Um, I started using the Zoom H6, I think, about two years ago. Yeah, and I wanted. We definitely met because it was something to do with tell him Steve Dave. Okay, yeah, 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 definitely. And then yeah, I've been I, working with them since like 2016. Basically. That's I'm so jealous, dude. <laughs> I'm insanely yeah, jealous. <laughs> yeah, they're funny. Do you listen to the podcast? Tell oh, them Steve, Dave. Religiously. Religiously. Yeah, yeah. They're I, I think uh, me and Brian are gonna do one together this coming week. Are you kidding me? Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure if it I don't know if I think it's probably gonna be for the Tell Them Steve Dave Patreon. Um, but he's basically doing like uh, you know, podcasts over the phone like everybody is right now. And right. Was, we were talking about it and um I played this prank on my buddy. And I'm like, oh, I should come on and tell that story. Because I went on and tell him Steve Dave, actually probably around the same time as the Mike Herrera one. And uh, I told a story of um, just this crazy thing that I did a long time ago for one of my first big film projects. Um, and so I've been on Tell Him Steve Dave, I think, three times now. Tell me the story. I want to hear the story because I've, I've definitely well, <laughs> heard it before. <laughs> the story, it's, it's pretty crazy. It was... Uh, 
when I was when I was younger, you know, uh, the band used to do like prank videos and stunt videos, kind of like Jackass. Mm-hmm. And so we did a big documentary about the band, but it had included a lot of these prank and stunt elements. And I did this thing where I had to do to give myself an enema in public um, during the day on this busy road in front of this high school. Oh my god, I dude! I totally remember this. <laughs> And I did it, and I got arrested. Yeah, it's it freaks and, uh, me out how small of a world it is between you and I. Because this is the first time we've ever spoken. That's right. Yeah, absolutely, definitely I, the first time we've talked. You know, what? I want people to hear this story because I've heard it and, and it's lovely. So keep going. <laughs> I don't know if you want me to tell this story again. I, I, absolutely, so I want you to tell it, man. All right. So, uh, so yeah, my band Senior Discount. We're a punk band. We're kind of like, you know, influenced by No Effects, Green Day, Blink One Eighty Two. Uh, against me and uh rancid let's say and um when we came out we were like we're in we're you no know, i'm in rhode island and uh providence rhode island had like a really cool music scene including a great punk rock scene and we were kind of like man like how can we kind of stand out from the pack and, and be different and i was always really involved in film and i was really interested in film so we were kind of like well, well let's make uh short films and like comedy videos to get people to like know about us and kind of spread the word about shows and releases. And this is a long time ago. This is, you know, we started the band in 2004. Okay. So it was around 2004, 2005. So YouTube wasn't even like a big deal at that point in time. Um, and after we did a few prank videos, um, we uh, we were going to make a, like a full-length documentary, like a 90-minute movie about the story of the band. And this is probably in like 2000, I guess 2008 or something like that. And it's just because and you guys did- could. Yeah, it was it was honestly because what happened was we were doing these videos online and it was it was hard. Like right now it's easy to do streaming videos and put them on YouTube and Facebook and everything. Sure. But back then it was like we had to put uh Windows media files on our server and then people would come to our website and watch them and then it would like crash our server and we'd have to pay more server costs. It was crazy. We couldn't really get them out to people. Right. So we had the idea of like well, let's make a 90 minute movie and do like screenings in Ro- in Rhode Island in Providence and get people to come out to the screenings because we love doing like alternative events and stuff like that. Okay. We would do like, we would do like live, you know, concerts like normal, but we'd also do like, you know, we, we, we did like a sketch show and like now with my podcast, the Chuck and Brad podcast, we do comedy shows and stuff like that. So we did a lot of like alternative things and um, we were like, yeah, we'll do some screenings of, a, of like a full length movie. That'll be cool. It will sell the DVDs. So one of the things we planned for it was this, uh, this like scavenger hunt, but it was based on tasks, not on, not on, uh, not on like finding things. <laughs> it's like, it was you, like you have to do this thing. Yeah. You okay. have to do this. Yeah. All and right. I think of it in terms of like a jackass kind of thing. Okay. And one of them was called Enema at Fatima. And there's a school in, in, uh, I think it might might even be in Massachusetts, technically, but in Rhode Island or Massachusetts, right on the line, there's a school called Fatima High School, and it's right on this busy road, and you had to go during the day and give yourself an enema in front of the school on the main road um, as part of this thing. And how old were you (laughs) at this time? See, that's the thing. So I was 20 years old when when I filmed this. This is a long time ago. We were were, were young boys at the time. What kind of school was it? It was a Catholic high school. Okay, so it was a high school. It wasn't like a like a primary school because that would have been that would have been weird. Well, it was also it was also in the summer. Their the school wasn't in session, so it wasn't for the school. Oh, okay. It was just because okay. of the fact you know it was just the fact that you. it was on a main road. It wasn't to, for the kids in the school. So I went and I I did it and like you know everyone you know you're filming it, and so I did it and it was uh, rough and uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah you know I, I shit all over the parking lot because that's what enemas do. And, um, you know, some time went by, you know, we all, we all did different stunts and stuff like that. Some time went by, I was editing the movie. Um, the school found out about it. They didn't know that I did it. They just found the huge piles of shit, I guess. And so they thought it was the soccer team. You didn't clean it up? Team. You just left? Well, what am I supposed to clean it up? It's, it's, well, it's first of all, it's outside. Bro. It's on a parking lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so so well, what are you, how are you going to clean that up? What if a dog went by? You'd leave it. I anyway, don't know, man. Um, <laughs> anyway, That's so, cr- uh. You're braver the, the than me. Th- <laughs> they thought it was a, the soccer team that did it. So they canceled the school's soccer season as like a punishment to the team. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, and I thought that was obviously not my intention. I didn't think about the soccer team. <laughs> um, and what happened was I was editing it. This is in the time of like instant messenger, like AOL instant messenger. And I edited that part and I sent it to my buddy 
who was you know filming with me, and he put it up in his away message, like a link to our our uh, our website. Yep. Uh, that's, our, that's, like you know the, the the specific file that was like hidden from the public, but you could see if you clicked on this link, and someone turned it over to. Fatima High School. Of course they And they did. called that's the what, police. That's what we do. Yeah. That's what we do as humans. <laughs> yeah. I'm not they involved the in this, but I feel like I want to be, so let me tell somebody what I know. <laughs> that's all that yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's people wanting exactly. to be in the attention of something. Or is it someone, you know, who knows somebody on the soccer team and they feel bad for them? Yeah, I mean... write some wrongs. Yeah, I got you. So, uh, so they, uh, yeah, I got arrested for it, but... Uh, you know the footage was well worth it. it was still it made the movie. Do you but yeah, I told the story on and tell him Steve Dave and uh, Walt was uh, not pleased with it. Man, it's I, I. I'm honestly sitting here having a hard time knowing that I'm talking to somebody that is a part of Tell Him Steve Dave in in some way. Oh, man. <laughs> so this is this is how I got started with telling Steve Dave. Um, my yeah. wife, do you know anything? What do you know about me? Do you know anything? I know that you have the show is called the Bob and Katie Show. Uh huh. I know that you worked on Mike Carrera's podcast. Okay. Uh, I, I saw your name involved in it, which made me think of you as like, okay, this person either like works in audio or works in podcasting in terms right. of the the editing side. And that's 100% of what I know. Okay. Yeah. 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 And, and and I lucked up with that. Um, how I got hooked up with uh, Mike, my wife was a huge fan. When I first okay. met her, I listened to, to rap music. I didn't even hardly listen to rock and roll at all. And she was a giant yeah. fan. So naturally, I was like, okay, well, I need to listen to this band because I like her. And that's what you do as a guy. You change things to yep. to get with women. Sure. Um, so mm-hmm. started listening to it and actually loved it. Became a big fan. And we were uh, – the show was starting to take off a little bit. And I decided, oh, let me let me pull this chain. So I sent him a message. I think it was on Snapchat or something. And I was like, yeah. hey, man, this is Bob from the Bob and Katie show. My wife is a huge fan. Can you, like, wish her a birthday? Like, send me a video wishing her a birthday, audio, something. Yeah. And he did it. Yeah, Pro- yeah. Probably turns out not even because of what the show I was on, just because he's a super nice guy. And yeah. uh, I, I played it for her on a podcast, and she cried. I mean, it was pretty yeah. pretty insane. Yeah, and then uh, that was it. I had c- kind of a contact with him. He knew who I was. And I started doing mm-hmm. notes first. So, and, and that was simply, I would listen to his podcast, take notes, send them to him so he could get that to his listeners. And then it just evolved into what it was. Right, right, right. But it was all, so it was all by you eventually, you eventually edited the podcast? Yeah, that's what I do now. Um, he, he calls me a producer, but really what I do is I just, I just edit it, take anything weird out of it, put it together. I put the beds down, stuff like that. It's, it's really, um, I'm not going to say easy, but it's, it's really streamlined at this point. Yeah, exactly. That's yeah. That's what we do when we produce our podcast too. It's like you basically get used to a workflow, and then you just execute it every week. Yeah. So, uh, Katie, uh, we tried having kids for a long time, and we we had some bad luck with it, and uh, we ended up going to the doctor, and he put her on some medicine. I can't remember what it's called, but it's basically supposed to make her eggs go nuts and just start working all over the place. And we got pregnant with mm-hmm. twins. Oh man! And then I was like, okay. Um, I'm going to have to get two jobs. So she ends up. <laughs> yeah. One oh, yeah. job for each kid. That makes sense. Right. Uh, she ends up in the hospital about a month before she had the kids. So I was driving about an hour uh, after work every day to see her. I'd stay with her at the hospital. And mm-hmm. I, I didn't even know what podcasts were at this point. But I had oh, been yeah. watching uh, Comic Book Men. Oh, and yeah. And I loved it. Loved Comic Book Men. And then I found out yeah. it was sort of. It came about through this podcast called Tell Him Steve Dave. So in these hours right. driving to the hospital, that's what I would listen to. So Tell Him Steve right. Dave was the first podcast I had ever listened to in my life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I'm... That's, that, 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 that makes sense. Honestly, that's a similar story to me, too. Well, I want to hear it. I, yeah, I don't even care if people don't like this episode. I'm so <laughs> involved in learning who you are that it's, it's, it's mind-bending to me. Well, it's, it's, it's funny because I feel like that's what, really, that's the strength of podcasting, right? Is that mm-hmm. it's an on-demand radio service where, you know, if you have a, a plane ride or a consistent commute or a traveling or, or even a job that's kind of solo where you don't talk to anybody. Right. Um, the way that I got into Tell Him Steve Dave was that I bought a house at the end of 2011. Um, you know, it, like really like like December 27th or something like that. Sure. And then I worked on it for four months. Uh, me and my dad both worked on it. 
from uh, the beginning of January to April, just painting and sanding and all the stuff you have to do. And I was there a lot of hours by myself. And I'd already listened to a bunch of Kevin Smith's Smodcast episodes. Yes. Which which included Walt and Brian here and there. And they were super funny. Hey, remember where and you're so, at. I need to ask you a question. This is personal yeah, um, for me. Yeah, yeah. So you listen to the yeah. Smodcast, right? Yeah. Do you listen to it whenever, uh, oh my gosh, what's his name? Scott Arthur. Mosier? Yes, whenever he's not on it. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it, it, it really depends. Because like, let's say... Uh, Let's say Kevin Smith has like a random person on that I don't really know. Mm-hmm. I might not listen to that because I don't really know the person. But like he did one with Gerard Way from Mike Michael Romance, which yeah. is a band I really like a lot. And they all they talked about was lyric by lyric the Black Parade song. I remember. Yeah. And I was like I was like, holy shit. So I, I do listen to I'd say I listen to the majority of the of the episodes without Scott. But I, not I just all get, of them. I, I get so disappointed because them two together are amazing. Oh yeah, I mean it's a different it's a different show. Ke- Kevin Smith's a really interesting guy. I'm I'm a huge fan. I'm really connected to what he does. Mm-hmm. You know, he opened up that Kevin Smith Club last week. Did you see that? Yes, I felt like yes. an idiot. Let me tell you what I did. I I was yes. driving in the car and I was like, you know what? I really want to hear this Plus One ep- uh, podcast again. Um, yes. Plus One was a podcast that Kevin Smith did with his wife uh, Jen Schwabach. Mm-hmm. Is that how you say your name? That's right. And for me, when I listened to it, I was like, oh, I podcast with my wife. I, I love this. I love how good they are together. And, and I was trying yes. to get my wife to listen to it. But honestly, she, she's not a real big podcast listener. And, uh, yeah, yeah. And, and the other day I was driving and I was like, I really want to hear this podcast again. And I tweeted yeah. to Kevin Smith just because that's what you do in life now. And I was like, I said, hey, man, you guys got to do plus one again. I said, I edit podcasts. I'll do it for free. Like, I'll do it for you. Just just put them together. I want to hear it. And Mm -hmm. then it must have been like 20 minutes later, Facebook, I guess, knew that I like Kevin Smith. And then I got a sponsor thing going, oh, that that club and that's a part of it is the plus one. So I'm gonna, oh yeah, yep. I'm gonna have to sign up to that now so I can hear that podcast. (laughs) Yeah, that first episode is great. That first new episode is awesome. Oh, you've heard it already. Yeah, it's great. It's excellent. What a small world, man. This is insane that I'm even talking to you. So keep keep going with your story. So basically, uh, I was uh, I don't know exactly what made me listen to Tell Him Steve Dave at that time, but I had heard, like I said, I'd heard Walton Bryan, and maybe even like an advertisement came up on Facebook or someone mentioned it mm-hmm. that Walton and Brian do their own show. Who knows? Maybe even Kevin tweeted about it. He's like, if you haven't checked out Tell Him Steve Dave, Steve Dave, I don't know. I don't know what made me listen to it, but. Right then in 2012, in like January, I started listening to Tell Him Steve Dave, which is pretty close to uh, when they started. I think they started in February 2011. So I started listening then. I became a huge fan. I loved all the, uh, I loved all the, the games episodes and I loved it. It was great. Yeah. Um, I loved, you know, Practical Jokers came out, Comic Book Men, all that stuff. And I was a big fan of all that stuff. Um, and uh, then... I was recording my podcast this whole time, um, including doing a couple of small live shows and filming them with like a multicam setup, like maybe like three cameras. And tell them, Steve, Dave, if you know them, you know that Walt does not like to do live shows at right. all. And so they very rarely do uh, live shows. So one summer, I think it was the summer of 2016. Uh, so that's, May, that's true, were, huh? Like he really, is, he really does feel that it. way. Hates it, hates him, and so, I, I suggest, you know, I talk to Walt constantly. I'm in contact contact with Walt all the time, and I'll have ideas about you know different things they can do that kind of really pull his responsibility back of mm-hmm. doing a live show, but doing some kind of live thing, and he does not want to do them. Hundred percent true, but uh, because they haven't done a lot of live shows with Walt, um, in May of 2016, they were doing like I think it was part of like the the New York Podcast Festival or something like that. Okay. And I was going to Brooklyn to see it with my girlfriend. Um, and I reached out to Walt, who I, who I don't know. I don't know. And I didn't, at the time, I didn't know any of the guys. No connection. I reached out to his email and I said, uh, hey, man, like I do a podcast. Um, you guys never do live episodes. I hope you're filming this episode that, that's coming up. Uh, if not, I'd love to film it. And he wrote back and he just kind of wrote... Um, he said, like, oh, thank you for offering or whatever. You know, because he, does, he doesn't know me. He doesn't know if he can trust me, whatever. Sure. So then they announced another live show that summer. And again, I'm like, man, I'm like, they never, they probably hadn't done a live show in like three years at that point. Right. 
So I wrote him again and I was like, hey man, I'm like, listen, I'm like, you really should be, you guys should really be filming your live shows because you do them so rarely. It's going to be really important to people to have this stuff. And I was like, let me send this to everyone I can. So I sent it to Walt. I found Brian's email address. I found all these different people. And finally, I found the email address for Impractical, the Impractical Joker's manager, who's Quinn's manager. Yeah. I wrote to him. And at this point in time, I, it's funny, my house had burned down, actually. And so I was living in Providence in a uh, temporary apartment. Um, and Quinn's manager wrote me back and he was like, he's like, yeah, we're, th- you know, what do you think? What would you film this with? He started asking me about filming it, the live show. And so I, I told him my equipment and uh, like two days before the show, Oh they were like, God. yes, like, come down, film the show. We could pay you this much, blah, blah, blah. Oh, and they're going to pay you? I didn't have anybody. <laughs> I didn't have any. I didn't have, uh, I didn't have uh, people to go with me because it was so short notice. And I also didn't have that much equipment because I lost equipment in the fire. Oh, so God. I went to Best Buy and I dropped like $2,000 on the best equipment they had um, in terms of like B and C cameras. I had my A camera. Yeah. Um, and I taught my girlfriend and my buddy Brad, who I podcast with. I was like, "Here's how to, you know, hold the camera. Here's here's what to focus on." Blah blah. We went to New York City. Went to the Gramercy Theater, which I don't know if it was sold out, but if it wasn't sold out, it was like on the cusp. We set up. We didn't even talk to the guys at all. Um, you filmed the Gramercy and, show. Yeah, and yeah. I filmed. I, I directed and I edited it too. Shut up, man! I love that one. I have it. Yeah, yeah, that's that's me. It, that's great. It says directed by directed by Chuck State and real what big a in the front in the, in the beginning small of the thing. World, man, this is insane. And all, all the music, all the music in it is senior discount. It's all my band. But uh, so you know, we filmed it, and I didn't even know. I didn't really know the guys. And so there was one. Sh- it was Sal went up. Sal Volcano went up and did stand up. Then the guys did a show. Then there was like an in between, and I went downstairs, and everyone was around. And I talked to Walt for the first time, and I was like, "Hey, man, I'm Chuck. I'm filming the show." what are we filming this for? And he's like, I don't really know. This is Quinn's whole thing. And I was like, uh-huh. okay. Yeah. Went back up, filmed second show, same thing. Um, talked to the guys for five minutes at the end. That was the only time I met them the whole time, really. Went back to the hotel, went back to Rhode Island. And like eight months went by. And I still, I still didn't know what was going on with this footage. I had it. And I talked to Walt and I was like, hey, like, so what's going on with this footage? And he's like, oh man, He's like, he's like, we, he's, he didn't say we forgot all about that, but they basically had no plans for it. Well, yeah. I so mean, he's like, well, maybe we should. <laughs> I've, I've listened to them for a long time and I know how their plans yeah. go. <laughs> well, you know what? That was, uh, I, I hate to say this. I like to think that that was before I was involved. There was a lot of like stuff that was up in the air with video projects. But yeah, since yeah. I've been involved, we've basically been pretty good. Um, for the Patreon, they've never missed anything. One yeah. podcast a week and like maybe like, you know, oh two, God, to, dude, two to four videos a month for the past like almost two years now. It's so professional. I, I assumed, I assumed by everything in the past that when they launched Patreon, I was like, oh, this is going to be hit or miss big time. Yeah. And they're yeah, on yeah. it, man. It's very, very, oh, yeah. um, it, it, it's impressive what they do. Yeah, yeah. 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 They've been, they've been doing a great, great job with everything. I mean, I'm involved with uh, the majority of the video stuff, but in terms of the podcasting, like they're really, really on top of it. They're really, really take it very, very seriously now. Um, and I really think that they honestly, they have taken the majority of their creative projects seriously uh-huh. ever since they started. There was just a couple of things that happened, like the claymation thing. And it, there's different things that happened over the years that people uh, kind of took to mean that they don't take things seriously. But um, I feel like those things were uh, make up a very, very, very small amount of Tell Them Steve Dave projects, and they haven't happened in a long time. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, it was so basically, um, he was like, oh, yeah, like, maybe he's like, I, I don't I don't know exactly how it came about, but he was like, let's put out a Blu-ray. Can you figure out how to do that? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And so I, you know, basically started shopping companies. We got in touch with Copycats, and they've, they've done all our Blu-ray releases with Tell Them Steve Dave. Um, I was the go-between guy that kind of set it all up and did all the artwork for uh, m- most of the stuff. I had um, no idea you were this deep and involved in this show. <laughs> well, it was, it was basically, you know, it was, uh, the Gramercy. I, I you know, I, I directed the thing and I shot and I edited it and I did all the artwork for it. And I, you know, I authored the Blu-ray and did all that stuff. Mm-hmm. Then for TESD TV, I authored the Blu-ray and did a voice 
And there was one more. What, the what hell? voice oh, did oh, you no, do? What, L- what voice did you do? <laughs> it's a little. It's a little voice at, that's a part of uh, Quinn it to win it when they were talking about the prizes. Okay, and it's like here's this you know uh, I sell comics keychain, and here's uh, I don't know I, some other prizes. That yeah, I've doing. got that too. Then, I haven't watched it in a long time though. Yeah, yeah. And then there's um, the uh, elephants in the room. Um, I edited that and I did all the graphics and, and stuff for that and the artwork for that one. Dude, I've watched so um, much of your stuff. I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, right. It's great. Um, yeah, it's, yeah, it is. And then, and then the Patreon out over started. <laughs> <laughs> the Patreon started, uh-huh. and then the videos were just like constant and crazy. And we've yes. done like honestly, we've I, I think I've done like forty videos since the Patreon started. Something like that. Wow, that's wild. It's man. crazy. Yeah, it's absolutely crazy. So, um, I had a. I had, I'm going to, I'm going to be honest with you. Here we go. Here's, here's the honesty thing. I'd never listened to your podcast. Yeah. Now yeah, okay. you and I have, we haven't known each other, but I've known you existed for a couple of years now. And, uh, I, you know what, as a matter of fact, we were in another group together and we had no idea you were some podcast group and yeah. I saw you post something about, Hey, I've got, I'm in a band. And if anybody wants to use this music, you can, Sure, sure, sure. And then I responded to you, and I was like, hey, I actually would like to use um, one of these songs. Cause, uh, and it was for this podcast, actually. I just put you okay. know different music on it every now and then, and I, I picked one of your songs. Sure. And when I did mm-hmm. this, I didn't even realize that we had met before. So it was another one of those real small world type of things. Yeah. Yeah, man. I know. It's crazy. The world of podcasting is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of crossover. It's nuts. So a few days ago, I was like, well, if I'm going to talk to this guy, maybe I should listen to a podcast just a little bit. And uh, oh, yeah. I wasn't sure which one to listen to. And I, I opened up your stuff and I saw one that said The Amazing Jonathan. Oh, and yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Yep. And I was like, I don't know why he's in the title of this episode, but I love <laughs> The Amazing Jonathan. I was like, oh, this is I, I'm going to be best friends with this guy. That's what I thought. I was like, me and him are going to be best friends. I was like, I don't know what he's into, but every time he posts something, I'm like right on board with it. So to Hell be yeah. to be honest with you, I haven't finished it yet, but I did listen mm-hmm. to uh, to some of it. Yeah, you got to stop going to your parents' house, man. <laughs> like I'm just I'm here right now. <laughs> are you? That's where you're at now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can't. I can't. my house is so full. I, I well, it's not. It's not super full. It's me and my girlfriend, my roommate Jordan, and his daughter. Uh huh. Um, and my dog. But there's nowhere to to podcast really in my house. Oh my god! So you're at your parents' house right now, bro. You, yes. You gotta stop going to your parents' house, man. How old are they? I got, I got my five. Um, they're like sixty five and sixty. Okay. But my dad. So so I work from home. So All my right. job, you know, my work hasn't really changed. My dad is, is he owns a landscaping company, so he's out in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, you know. Luckily for him, he gets to he gets to stay outside. He doesn't have to go into people's houses. Yeah, yeah. Um, but he's he's going out way more than I am. I'm staying. I'm in my house basically. Um, but yeah, I figured I have my five. I got. <laughs> You're getting defensive. You're like, hey, motherfucker, listen. I I know I know what's going on. No, no. I'm um, so explain to everybody because I, I like this part of the episode. How you eat dinner with your family because it's it's great. Let's let's talk about that. All right, so we're all having, you know, it's coronavirus time. Okay. And so at my home, it's it's me and my girlfriend and my roommate Jordan and his daughter Cal. Um, and then so my parents who live up the street from me, you know, it's just them in their house, my mom and my dad. So what happens is because, you know, I want to spend time with them, I want to see them, but I want to be safe about it. My girlfriend and I go to their house. We don't touch anything, no doorknobs, mm-hmm. no counters, nothing. Right. They have this huge dining room that seats like, you know, 14 people. Is it like that Batman dining table? You know what I'm talking about? Like (laughs) the 1989? It is pretty big. It's not that big, but it's pretty big, man. Okay. We, me and my girlfriend sit at one side and they sit at the other. My mom puts together all the plates. She puts our plates down there. And then when we finished eating, we put them right in the sink. And we stay six feet away from the whole time. We leave after dinner. <laughs> I'm not going to let you get away with this. T- talk about what you do with the spoons. I want <laughs> how you get the food so out my, of the bowls. Let's go there. So basically, you know, if there's if like let's say there's four of us because it's me, my girlfriend, my mom, and my dad. My mom will put four serving utensils at every dish. So if we want to get more like mashed potatoes, uh-huh. I'll take a spoon. 
I'll get the mashed potatoes and I put the spoon right in the sink and everyone has their own serving utensil so that we're not sharing any um, utensils. Okay. I think we're being pretty good. I think right, pretty so good. L- let me, I want to, I want to walk through this. There's a bowl of mashed potatoes <laughs> and then there's four yeah. big spoons, right? So yes, uh, yes. person A is going to grab the first spoon. They get their scoop of mashed potatoes and the spoon goes into the sink. Yes. That's right. very smart. I love it. So yeah. what happens if you, good. if you want to go back and get more mashed potatoes, do you get a fifth spoon? Um, I, I, you know what, because she serves the first one, we're getting seconds with those spoons. Mm-hmm. So we don't usually go for thirds. And if I think I'm hungry enough to get thirds, I'll make sure that my seconds are big enough to cover the, cover the next portion. Gotcha. <laughs> I think it's pretty good. I think we're doing pretty good. <laughs> I uh, I do not work at home. I am lucky enough to be what uh, the government calls an essential. Mm, what do you do? I, I work at a hardware store. Okay. Because That's of not so bad. what I do, I really can't talk about it. I'll, I'll tell you what I do after right. this is over. Okay. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in the public uh, constantly. Right, I see. So it's Are you my, wearing a face mask all the time? Oh, yeah. That's where, that's where we're headed. Um, yeah. That is yeah, where I we're know. headed. So it's yeah. my anxiety level is through the roof. Um, I'm not yeah. not super concerned about me. You know, like I'm I'm doing everything I can to keep safe. I'm not so much worried about me. Uh, Katie has an autoimmune disease, so yeah, like she's been at home I think now for six weeks. She hasn't gone out anywhere. Yep. We got three little kids. I've got a five year old twins and a two year old. So I um, know. So she hates me. Cause that's, <laughs> that's, that's where it is now. Um, yep. no, she's a, she's a champ, man. I'm re- I'm really happy with what she's doing, but yeah, I tried, I'm, I'm doing the best I can not to bring anything home with me. So that's, that's my goal. Yeah. It's, it's tough, man. It's really tough. I'm trying to be really good too. Like we do the whole thing where it's like, you go to the grocery store, you come in, you, you basically put your clothes in the wash, you take a shower and you wash all the groceries. It's mm-hmm. tough, man. It's really tough. So where where, are you, where do you guys live? What state do you guys live in? I'm in North Carolina. Okay, there you go. You yeah. are, you're in, are you in Jersey? We're in Rhode Island. You're in Rhode Island. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> so there are 43 cases where I live. <laughs> wow. Um, how See, many cases are where sure. you live? <laughs> in, in, in my town where I live, there's like 12. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, Rhode Island is. I think Rhode Island is the best country in this. In in the, I mean, the best state in the country for dealing with this. They said that we're the only people that have enough tests to test every resident gotcha. and enough hospital beds to treat everybody. So how many are, um, are how many cases are in Rhode Island? Um, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I mean, I've been t- I've been staying on top of uh, my town. Let me see. There's actually, you know what? There's a there's a Twitter that updates me every day on how many we have. Let's see if it comes up. Um. In I North Carolina, where I live, there's over ten thousand now. Wow, uh, ours is a t- ours is eighty two hundred cases. Okay, so and, you're and you're better off than I am. And then uh, there's fifty five people on ventilators, and there's about two hundred and fifty deaths so far. Oh my god, it's wild. We're we're in such a different place now. Yeah, it's crazy. And it's not going to be the same crazy. for a long time. Yeah, she just uh, so our our governor is Governor Raimondo, and like I guess there's a lot of like uh, people who dislike her or whatever, but she's been like a, like a, a excellent at dealing with this. She basically does like a um, a press conference every day at one p.m. and she has for the past like month. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, I guess she's been just like killing it. We turned our our civic center into a hospital like immediately, and we have Brown University, and they turned their their housing into housing for like. Uh, healthcare professionals like yeah. single room so that they don't have to go home to their family um and uh yesterday she just said that all summer events are canceled so we'll probably be in this kind of situation like through september so for you what's what are some of the weird things that made you go oh this this life is different now well i mean honestly so i'm in a band and brad and i do live comedy shows so this so and also, man, I don't know. If, I don't know if I should say this. Well, that's all right. So you know how Smod Castle is opening in New Jersey? Yes. We're hoping to get involved, like from the get go, with Smod Castle to do live shows there. Yeah. Um, we do these live shows, me and Brad, 
where we take a movie and we do like a retelling of it on stage with with him drawing every scene because he's like a terrible artist that is like stomach turningly bad. Do you have and any so, video of this? Oh yeah, yeah. I'll send you some. Yeah, yeah. Send me it's, some. It's all, I'm, I'm so interested. I love comedy. Yeah, I, I want to do live comedy, but I'm scared to death. Yes. Well, it's it is scary, but it's our stuff is. Man. I'll send you it. It's it's private. It's we we haven't really released anything. Okay. From this series of stuff that we do, but I'll send you something. Um, so we do like Jurassic Park, Back to the Future, and we do it at comedy clubs and we tour around. We'll do like Rhode Island, Connecticut, Boston, New York, stuff like that. That's wild, man. Um, and we, uh, we moderate Comic-Con. So we moderated at Rhode Island Comic-Con last year and we got Brian O'Halloran to do Clerks live on stage with us. You, so you've met Brian O'Halloran too? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I know Brian. He's a great guy. Um, so, but we did Clerks live on stage with this drawings bit with Brian and... I want to do it when Smodcastle opens at Smodcastle opening weekend. Okay. Because it, cause it would be like the perfect thing. You, do you know about Smodcastle or not really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it'd be, oh, perfect. No, I'm, it'd be I'm, perfect. I'm honestly sitting on the other side of this phone call just jealous of everything you've said this whole time. <laughs> There's going to be a lot of people that listen to this episode and they're like, who is telling Steve David? Why are they kissing their ass so hard? I, you know what? <laughs> I honestly don't care if nobody likes this episode. I'm having a blast. <laughs> <laughs> good me too man i'm crazy jealous yeah, but, but but yeah so so the bit is great and it works so great in a live setting so having a way to do clerks yeah live with brian in smod castle in the building where they filmed it would be so awesome opening weekend so i'm trying <sighs> to make that happen but um you know we don't know exactly when that's going to be and whatever um but uh yeah so for me what's changed really is the idea of like no live stuff at all you know yeah that's it's weird it's it's very weird um we were supposed to do a couple shows this weekend actually we're supposed to do our live version of uh of uh, star wars a new hope for the first time for may the 4th and you can't do that you can't do it on like facebook live it's not the same fill-in there's you could you could and i i don't i I don't want to criticize anybody at all but it's hard for me to understand the uh the zoom comedy show or the facebook live comedy show I don't understand it. I'm happy that people are figuring it out and having a good time doing it, but mm. I don't know if I could do it. I don't even know that I'd be interested in watching. Yeah, I know. I know. Because I know whenever so, whenever you have a comedy show and you watch it, like when you watch something on Netflix or, you know, where wherever, it's it's not the same. It's tough. I mean, with, with at least with... I, I love comedy specials, mm-hmm. but the audience is such an important part of that right. where... You know, it's about the reaction to things and the way the audience is hesitant or expectant. And it really changes the flow of a comedy show. So it's hard for me to figure out us doing our show without that. Did you watch, did you happen to watch uh, the the WWF or WWE or what, the WrestleMania stuff? I haven't watched wrestling in 15 years, but they put out there that they were going to have WrestleMania for free for everybody to watch. And I, I was like, Katie, we definitely should watch this it's free. And they, they didn't yeah. have an audience and it was odd. It was so oh, yeah. strange to watch. I love that. I, did you watch it? I watched it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What a smart. Do you it's, watch I, wrestling on the normal or was it because of this that you watched it? I, I, I used to watch wrestling all the time. And then uh, I just, you know, personally, the, the quality dropped for me after certain things happened and um, certain people left and stuff like that. So okay. I love wrestling. I'm, I'm not I'm not currently following the storylines, but I really appreciate wrestling. I love it. And I... Um, I'm, 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 I'm like even when we're not watching when raw and smackdown or pay-per-views tour around here uh-huh. like you know rhode island boston connecticut we'll, we'll go to the events i love wrestling oh so you've been but, to like um, live wrestling ups that's i've oh, never done a that. million that's times cool. oh it's so fun it's that's so awesome. fun so There's when you were like when you were really into it I'm, I'm assuming it was a couple years back who who what who did you like what wrestler where were you at well cm punk was huge to me like that was one of the that was the probably like i watched wrestling I probably started watching wrestling in 1998 and I watched it for maybe like six years or seven years and I got Uh out of it. And the person that brought me back into it more recently was CM Punk. Okay. And uh, I loved him. And then when I love when Lesnar came back, Brock Lesnar, when he came back after winning the UFC championship, Mm -hmm. it was like a different world because he legitimized, you know, wrestling in general. Um, But I love every, I mean, I love everybody. I love, uh, you know, Dean Ambrose is a newer guy who is now John Moxley in a different federation i know none of the um, new people i know none of them when when i dropped oh, out was yeah. at the peak of stone cold being famous oh that's the best right but he's uh b- before him i was a huge sting fan 
I, w- I, I was, oh, yeah. that was my guy, him and Undertaker. That, that's where I was. Yeah. So it was fun for oh, me yeah. getting to see the Undertaker in this, uh, this last thing, but it, yeah, it's, yes. it's not the same as it used to be when I was younger. I, pr- I probably believed it more. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's different now too. If you watched a regular one with an audience, yeah, because <laughs> that's also a different, but, um, man, I got to tell you, if you, if you like that stuff, so you were probably familiar with the Hardy boys, right? Oh yeah. Dude, three years ago at WrestleMania, um, this tag team, The New Day, was hosting WrestleMania, and uh, there was a three-way ladder match. And Hardy Boys were out of out of re- out of uh, WWE at this time. They weren't, mm-hmm. you know, they were wrestling for like TNA or whatever it was. And uh, right before this three-way ladder match started at WrestleMania, New Day came out and they're like, "Listen, we're going to make this a four-way ladder match, but who are we going to add to the match?" And everyone in the audience was like, you know, anticipating it would be them. Yeah. But then the Hardy Boys music hit. Oh. The Hardy Boys came back and they had this insane ladder match where they tore down the house at WrestleMania and they won the belts. And it was like one of my favorite moments in wrestling ever. And it probably happened when I was like 31 years old or 32. <laughs> it's so weird how wrapped up in it you can get and you know oh. it's not real. Yeah. I mean, well, but, you know what it is. Now, here's 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 the thing. So let's say let's say you like do you like the Avengers movies? Let's say yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so you watch those movies, sure, and you watch Iron Man. And he's after Thanos, and right, you know he might have to make a sacrifice. It's not real. It's scripted. It's no different than watching wrestling. Oh no! What I was about to say was, you know, it's not real, but you still get yeah. like wrapped into it i'm i was watching oh, it yeah. i didn't know any of the people but i just from how they're acting i'm like i really hope this person wins and i'm sitting there pulling yeah, for it and i and yeah, i know of course I, I was, yeah but you know it is what it is oh um, yeah it's great i love it one of the things that i've come across in this whole coronavirus shutdown thing is die cast racing have you ever heard of this no, I don't. Is is that like the little cars? Yes, there is a group. I, uh, I saw it flag on Facebook, and I was like, "Well, I'm bored. I'm going to click on this." And I clicked on it, bro. These people damn. have put together a phenomenal racetrack. They have announcers, great video. It was like watching a real race, and I was sitting there That's going, "Really funny." I really wanted this person to win. Like, I almost bought a shirt. Like, it was that That's- good. <laughs> <laughs> it was so shirt. I go, I go on Facebook and I'm like, I got to see if they're on Facebook somewhere. And I found a group and I promise you it is nothing. If 95% of the 3000 people that are in this group are from the ages of 32 to 40 and they all play with wow. di- die cast cars and they're building tracks. And I'm like, these dudes don't care. They're in it. They just love it. It's amazing. I felt like an That's outsider. Really, really it's, it's a really, yeah. It, it's it's a really unique club that I don't think I can be a part of, but I love seeing it from the outside. That's hilarious. I I'll shoot it. you a link. It's 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 pretty great. Um, especially yeah, right. That's, that's fun. If you if you're into you know sports, what? there's none right now. So watching something weird like this is, <laughs> is it's a good way to I don't know get back in the world. Yeah, I will say like it's also like you know whatever someone can get passionate about, it's fun to watch those people be passionate about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I I kind of believe in that as well. So that that is really cool. That sounds fun. Do you ever uh, you ever play poker? Uh, I played a little bit of poker. There was uh, there was a game at the stash last summer that I got invited to. I never played poker before that, so I like learned that summer. Just Wait, to go play that so game. you you played poker with Tell and Steve Dave? <laughs> well, no, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't. See, it's, it's really <laughs> funny. Like the the behind the scenes of the secret stash and all that stuff. It's very yeah. strange. Um, but. Uh, no, the the Tell Em Steve Dave guys weren't playing. It was a it was a different group of of uh, of guys that was there. Okay, um, like Ernie O'Donnell was was kind of the guy that was running the game and stuff like that. He's from Clerks and he's uh, he's going to be running Smod Castle. But um, yeah, I just went down to just kind of play. There was a, there was actually a bunch of people who were Ke- uh, Kevin Smith fans and Tell Em Steve Dave fans that I yeah. knew as well that played. And they're all they're all great guys. Everyone I meet through the podcast is a great dude. So. It was kind of just fun to go down and uh, and play poker, but so I just learned this past summer. Wow! I, I yeah. the, the reason I bring it up is I found this app called Poker Face, and yeah. for the situation that the world is in, I'm like, I can't believe this thing isn't more famous than it is right now. And I think it's gonna be. I'm gonna call it right now. I'm gonna tell you this is gonna be one of the biggest games through this COVID thing that's gonna hit. But uh, it's you go on, you play poker online, not for real money. But normally with these online poker games, it's like, you know, a poker table and there's a circle with whatever avatar you pick to be in there, a sheep or, a, 
you know, Iron Man or something like that. But instead of Mm -hmm. an avatar, you can only play Mm -hmm. on your phone and it records your face. So like you're, you're at a table with people and it's like FaceTime. So you can talk, you're betting, but yeah, like, uh, so if you and I are contacts in our, in my phone, I could set up a table like with you. So you could shoot me, you could shoot me your girlfriend's number. Um, I save it in my phone and then I set up a table because you can only go up to four people and it it could be me, my wife, you and your girlfriend. And it's kind of like a a four way poker date that we can do and and still stay, stay away from each other at the same time. That's really, really cool. I like that. So what, what else? Tell me something that you enjoy outside of tell them Steve Dave. So I can be like, Oh yeah, we're going to be, we should come in contact even though we should be stay away from each other. (laughs) <laughs> so my deal is basically that, you know, I do the film work for Tell Him Steve Dave consistently. We come, I come out with a video for Tell Him Steve Dave probably once every two weeks. Mm-hmm. It's kind of been the the uh, the routine. And then I do the podcast once a week uh, with my buddy Brad. From the podcast, I actually got hired to be a writer for a couple uh, publications in Providence, Rhode Island. So I write for Providence Monthly, Motif Magazine, and The Bay Magazine as mostly, honestly, a food writer. But I also write about like comedy, movies, and stuff like that. Um, and then I do, you know, I'm in the band, uh, my band senior discount, we're a punk rock band. Like I was saying before we play out here and there, Brad and I do live comedy shows and then I'm just, I do other, uh, I do other like video projects, uh, like comedy projects, like me and Ray, uh, the guy, Ray Harrington is a comedian. Um, and he's on my podcast like pretty often, especially Mm -hmm. right now. Um, and, uh, we've been working on this show called undependent for the past two years, that I'm really, really proud of. It's it's like a single camera sitcom about filmmakers. Um, we were in a couple film festivals, and uh, it's we're still kind of working on it and trying to find a cool way to get it out to people. And I think that that's going to happen really, really soon. So I do a lot of film work. Um, there's a comedian named Mark Normand who is on the podcast Tuesdays with Stories. You've you've talked to right Mark now. Norman as well. Yeah, I'm working on I'm working on videos with him right now. Oh my god, dude, I'm so jealous of your special. life. We, you and I have to be, I got to figure out a way <laughs> to like make myself dependable in your life so that I can just gain <laughs> access to some of this crazy. I love Mark Norman. Oh, me too, me too. That's yeah, yeah, he's coming out with a special on Mar- on May 16th on YouTube. Uh-huh. And so I'm going to be working on uh cutting up the special into like clips and stuff like that so we can promote it online Shut to get your people face. to see. That's it. great. Yeah, it was it was cool too because like uh, you know I because we do this podcast that's so long running in Rhode Island, mm-hmm. it's actually cool. You here, here I'll, I'll give you a tip. Do the same thing as this. Ready? If you like comedians, when they tour to the venue closest to you, just ask them to be on your podcast because they're not going to be doing anything else and they're going to be there for a couple of days. Yeah, so they'll do it. Um, and so you know we last time Joe List came to. Rhode Island, I was I reached out to him and I'm like, oh, come on our podcast. So we met up and he came on the podcast. And because you know he came on the podcast, we had a little bit of an in with him. I started reaching out to Tuesdays with Stories, which is his podcast with Mark. Yeah. And I was just making these little like clips that they could I would take their newest podcast, make it into like a visual clip that they could post on Instagram and Facebook and stuff like that. And they, you know, I started talking to them through that, and then I kind of stayed in contact with. I've Mark seen that. Like, hey man, what, the world just continues yeah. to get smaller and smaller and smaller. <laughs> you know what's really going to be messed up? Like we're going to end this, and I, I'm, yeah. we're, we're going to hang up, and I'm going to sit here and go, "Wow, what a great guy!" Like I'm, I'm really excited that I know this person, and you're going to be like, "Wow, that guy's a stalker." <laughs> like, I, I feel yeah, no please dude, i love stalkers that uh, i feel like that's where we're at and, and and like i don't know how deep like i said that you're into this relationship but i'm full in man like i'm <laughs> oh, there i'm down, I'm down. <laughs> i love i love new pals um but yeah yeah so so i just yeah I, so i just kind of stayed in contact with him and we're going to be working on stuff now for his special which uh it's going to be free on youtube which is awesome we just got to get people to to watch it you know i have this new so game that i like to play uh where I listen to how people talk and the things that they say. And I, I try to go, Hey, I know a podcast you listen to. So I, I'm oh, going to interesting. I like this. This is the first time I've ever done this recording. So you're going to be my first time that people are going to listen to it. And, and, and I'm either going to be right or I'm going to be wrong. But uh, from yeah, the conversations that you and I have, I feel about 90% that you listen to the Joe Rogan podcast. 
I don't listen to the Joe Rogan podcast. Really. Oh. However, <laughs> however, um, I'm you know I'm open to podcasts. So like he's one of those people that I have uh-huh. his podcast on my um, on my like my feed. I use Podcast Addict. It's an app for yeah. Android. And so uh, you know if I see someone cool go up like Joe or Mark or something like that, I might listen to an episode here or there. But um, I like Joe Rogan. I think he's a good guy. I think he's a He's uh he's he's doing a fun thing and he's doing exactly what he wants and it's incredibly successful. And so you you really don't that. listen to it? No, I don't really listen to it. I have I have heard it and I've seen clips and here. And so there. let me let me tell you why I said that. And now when you listen to it, you're gonna go, oh, that's what he's talking about. Yeah, I've listened to it so much that this uh this is one thing that uh it, it's bad for me. Like I would listen to Tell Him Steve Dave every day when I drive. I normally drive between an hour and a half to two hours a day, so I listen to a lot of podcasts. I would notice when me and Katie would record, I would say things that these guys have said over and over again, like, uh, you know, like, like sayings, not copying topics or anything like that. But, uh, I've been listening to Joe Rogan and I've started doing the same thing again. And when I realized that I would hear other people doing it and I would go, Oh, they listen to this podcast too. And you've said a couple of those things. One thing that he does on this show constantly is he goes hundred percent, hundred percent. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I definitely say 100%. That's fun. I've never said that before in my life on a continuous basis, <laughs> and now I'm finding myself saying it all the time. And, and the only reason is because I hear this person in my ear say it constantly. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, no. Me, me and my girlfriend will point stuff to, stuff like that out uh, yeah. all the time about like picking up speech patterns and stuff like that. So I totally hear you. That's really, really funny. I did that to my wife a long time. This was before we had kids. I was like, I wonder if I could get her. It was, it was this really <laughs> weird experiment I did with myself. I was like, I wonder mm-hmm. if I could get her to say something strange. So I made mm-hmm. up this phrase and it was turd bucket. And I was yeah. just like, I'm just going to say this randomly around her until I can get her to say it. It took me six months, man. <laughs> it took me six <laughs> months. I would random, like I'd get mad in traffic. I'm like, oh, that turd bucket. And uh, I would just, you know, I would say it randomly. I didn't overdo it. You know, I would just sneak it in there. And uh, yeah, sure enough, about six months after I started, our dog did something. I don't remember what it was. And my wife looks down and goes, stop being a turd bucket. And oh, that's funny, I man. jumped up. I was happy. I, I, I clapped. I was laughing. And she looked at me like. What the hell is wrong with you? Because she had no, really, no really clue, funny. no idea. It was one of my favorite things ever. That, yeah, speech that's patterns funny. I, are, I, I, are on. Actually, I did, a, I did a similar thing recently because uh, one of my favorite things is just like making people confused. Yeah. And so I'll take, I'll take, it's, I'm going to explain this in a second. It's going to sound uh, weird, but I'm going to explain it. So I'll take things that I know are going to happen that someone's going to find out about mm-hmm. and I'll say something about it beforehand that seems ridiculous, but then they'll find out the fact and it seems true. Here's my example. So my girlfriend just got a new laptop and she had to get a USB-C hub because all it has is USB-C and she wants to be able to plug in SD cards and stuff. Oh my God, it's and miserable. So, yep. And so I saw this hub on sale and it was by the brand Anchor. And so, um, and I looked and it said like, oh yeah, this, this thing is half off. You have to use the code Anchor Chub. Anchor C-H-U-B, right? Uh-huh. And so I read that. And I said to my girlfriend, before I told her about it, I said, I'm like, oh, you know, we should look into Anchor Hubs. She's like, oh, yeah? Because I knew she was looking for a USB hub. I'm like, yeah, it's weird. Their uh, their catchphrase is, everyone has a chub for Anchor. Because wow. obviously that's not a real catchphrase. But then when she hears the code, she's going to think that it might be the real catchphrase. You know <laughs> yeah. what I mean? Oh, my God. I'm in love with you. Isn't that funny? That, that's <laughs> Isn't that amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, go like this, I go, I go, yeah, you know, I'm like, they're, they're, uh, I go, their catchphrase is everyone has a chub for anchor. Yeah. And it's true. And she goes, and, I, and so you'd think that she'd go, what do you mean? That can't be their catchphrase. What a weird catchphrase. But she goes, well, how come? Why are they so good? And I kept, and she wasn't even questioning the fact that that might be their catchphrase. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. They just work really well. I'm like, I'm like, Jordan uses it. Jordan has a chub for anchor. I have a chub for anchor. And I'm expecting her to say like, well, stop saying that. Like, why are you saying that? But instead she's just like, well, how come? <laughs> like, why is it so good? And finally I told her the code and she never thought it was weird or confusing. But I, then at the end, I'm like, why did you believe me that their, their code was that? Their, their their catchphrase was everyone has a chub for anchor. That's great. And why did you think it was normal that I just kept describing us all as having a chub for anchor? And she goes, Oh, I don't know. I didn't think about it. But, so uh, you that's you funny. you enjoy messing with people. 
Love it. Oh, it's the best thing in the world. Uh, does it make you nervous? Like, uh, so never when we <laughs> never, it, it, it makes me nervous. Like I'm you, you're not going to believe how long I thought about calling you out on going to your parents' house. I was like, I oh, want to do it man. right off the bat. I just want to make him uncomfortable. I love making people uncomfortable so they can fight their ways out. I can just watch them squirm. <laughs> it's one of my, it's one of my favorite things to do. Wh- something I like to do with uh, it's it's really just my wife because I don't really hang out with anybody now. Is I'll, I'll talk and I'll just throw nonsense mm-hmm. words in on purpose, sure. just just yeah, to see if yeah, they're yeah. listening. I'd be like, yeah, we went down to the store and it's so break and and it was just more than you know what I'm saying. And like people will go, oh yeah, and I'm like, <laughs> no, you don't. I, I didn't I yeah, didn't exactly. say real words. Or yeah, when I'm exactly. on the phone, I'll just like to talk and more at. And do something like that, and you just make people go, hello, hello. And yeah, I don't know yeah, why. Yeah, it's yeah. because I'm a child. I'm a child. Yeah. I, I like making people confused. I think it's fun. That, that is really funny to me. There's uh Have you ever seen Man on the Moon with Jim Carrey? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's great. It's it's a wonderful movie. I, it's yeah, it's it one is. of my favorite movies. My favorite yeah. scene in this movie was when they were in the dressing room, and they started talking about the zoo. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, we paid a bunch of people to go into the zoo and they just started screaming, oh my God, the lion's out and they'd run away. And when, mm-hmm. and I'm dying because yeah. that, it was something that I would do. And when he said, yes. oh, it was just funny to two of us. I was like, yes, why not? <laughs> yep. If I had that kind of money, I would do weird stuff like that all the time. One of the things I want to do with my parents is like hire a team of movers and just while they're sleeping, just go inside and just move everything out. That's funny. Because my they, they yeah. have my parents won't sleep with the phone in their room. They'll, they'd leave it like on the charger in the kitchen. So I would take the phones. They can't oh, yeah, call yeah. they can't call the police. They just get up. Their couch is gone. Just everything's gone. Their <laughs> phones. Yeah. And and I'm not gonna film it. I'm just doing it because I think it's funny. And I'm I'm an evil person, I guess. I I, I like I like confusion pranks too. I've done a couple of uh these pranks that I have kind of like figured out that I haven't seen anyone else do, but I'm, I've, I've eventually I'm, someone else must do this. Mm-hmm. Um, I take, uh, you can go online, you can go on white pages and you can just get random addresses from all around the country by looking for anything. Like you could just look up, you know, like a last name that's common, like, uh, like Brown or Smith or whatever you want yeah. and just find a million addresses and I'll make up something. Um, like I'll make up a fake funeral invitation or a Christmas card and I'll write like really confusing messages on these cards and I'll send them out to people. So like to strangers? One of the th- Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, well, hold on, hold on. I'll, I'll, okay. Let me explain okay. this a little bit better. I'll explain it better. So my buddy, we had this buddy named Eric Maxud. He used to be the guitarist in my band. And like you ever have like an inside joke with your friend where you like you make up a hypothetical situation? Like I we always said that he had this grandmother, Noni Maxud. Yeah who was uh, like slutty and racist and stuff like that. We were just teasing him about this fictional grandmother character we made up, right? Yeah. So we had we did a live podcast one time in front of an audience and we called him on stage and I'm like, I made up fake funeral invitations for Noni Maxud and I sent them to 100 people across the United States and we put an email address on it as opposed to a return address. Yeah. So we read all the things that we wrote in front of the audience as well as the responses we got in the oh, email from people and it was so beautiful fucking hilarious actually you know what? it went so well we sent it into impractical jokers uh-huh. because um i really want to work on impractical jokers and they invited us to submit to write for a season seven of impractical jokers what they like yeah <laughs> they, dude uh, i love impractical yeah. jokers it's like one of my it's it's the only show i like on television dude i love i love uh elevated prank ideas so yeah. we wrote it in to to the writers who i didn't know i didn't have any connection to them yeah yeah and i said here's this video we did and uh that's how i became friends with casey jost um is he's the one that got it and uh yeah he sent us over like packets to do to what was his name who was it season casey jost now is he the guy that does like the uh, the the TV show stuff like in between and and things? Yeah, that, that's, that's him. The same. You he has know like, that guy? He has like silvery gray hair. Yeah, 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 yeah. He came on our podcast too. We met. Or up what with him kind in New York. of weird life do you live that you have access to <laughs> all of this amazing? These it's every everything in my life that I love. You're talking about it. <laughs> I guess because I, I because I try to do good work 
by myself on the ground level. Right. And then I take that work and I try to reach out to whoever I can that I want to be involved yeah, I, with. I feel like I just need to start coming up with things that I really like and just going, hey, do you like this? So, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, right. I love Howard the Duck. Are you a big Howard the Duck fan? Yeah, I love Howard the Duck. What? Do you like the movie? Yeah, of course. I haven't seen the movie in a long time, but he's a character consistently in Marvel comics. Yeah. He's part of like Marvel zombies and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I've read a bunch of uh, Howard the Duck comics. Marvel zombies was so good. The first time that I ever read that was in, uh, it was the first time I was on an airplane because I was trying yeah. not to uh, pee in my pants. That's, that's where I was. I was so scared to get on an airplane that I ended up buying that yeah. and reading it. It was so good. Dude, I love it. Marvel Zombies and Old Man Logan are the two comics that got me like back into comics. I am getting ready to start Old Man Logan. It's the best. Uh, but the original, the original Old Man Logan from two thousand nine. Yeah. No, no, no. Dude. Um, I don't know when it's from. It's more recent than that. I think it's way more did recent you, well, did, than that. You, you gotta, you gotta read the original story first. Did you I, read the original? I don't have access to it. I, I've, I've got this one because um, I, I've got very few friends. Like, so I'm gonna count you as a friend now. So that puts me up to like three. <laughs> Um, Let, well, let's let's talk after the podcast because maybe I can get you some Old Man Logan. But everything that Old Man Logan like does later is yeah. really based on the original story. Yeah, really, my, really, really based. On the my original. buddy Tim gave me a whole bunch of comics. He was he was moving and had to get oh. rid of some stuff, and that was one of them. And I was like, I really want to read this, and I've I, I've I've got it out. I'm looking at it like I, it's getting ready to happen. What does it say? What does it say? It's just it's just the old man Logan. He's uh he's got like the the face. Um, hang on, once I can't reach it right at the moment. I don't know what it says on it, but it's it's the newer one. I think it came out like 2016 ish. Yeah, yeah. There's a whole there's a whole run of the new one. It's and it's also excellent. It's I want to really, say really I've got like 12 issues of it, maybe. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's great. We'll talk after this, and maybe I'll be able to get you the original story. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, yeah. Why don't you? Yeah, I mean, my, I was going to say, my whole thing is just kind of reaching out to people, even if it doesn't seem like it's going to work out. Yeah. I just still reach out to people and say, hey, man, here's the work I do. I'd love to help and do this, or I'd love to be involved in this, or I'd love to do this. And, you know, you get 99% no's, but then 1% yes. No, I get it. That's that's totally how I ended up on the Micro Error podcast. Same exact situation. Yeah. I was just like, oh, I could do this. And they actually said no. I, I reached out and I was like, hey, I can edit your your podcast. It was like, no, uh, no, we, we we're good. But uh, if you want to yeah. just listen and write some notes down, and I was like, okay, I'll listen and write some notes down, and uh, now yeah. I now I do something completely different. So I, it was, you know, you just got to weasel your way in, I guess. I completely agree. <laughs> Which is what I'm going to attempt to do to you. I mean, like that, you're you're a target now. You understand that, right? <laughs> if, you're totally hey, a target. Free, man. <laughs> we can use all the help we can get. So please do. Um, I went. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm saying it right now in front of everybody. When you get to a point where you're like, "Wow, we really need some audio edited," and I've got to work on this video, I'm going to shoot this audio to Bob, and he can help me. That's where I'm at, dude. I'll totally do it. Hell yeah, awesome. I appreciate it. <laughs> so plug everything you want right now. Just plug it. All right. So basically, uh, for the for my podcast, go to chuckandbradpodcast.com. It's also called the Chuck and Brad Podcast. It's available on iTunes, Spotify. I think Stitcher, you know, you could find it on any podcast app. Um, and we have a lot of fun. We uh, we talk about movies, comedy, music, video games from the viewpoint of people who are actively, you know, making films and comedy and yeah. music and stuff like that. Um, you can follow me at Discount Chuck on Twitter and Instagram. And you can find the Chuck and Brad podcast on Facebook. And uh, hey, man, if you love Tell Him Steve, Dave, sign up for the Patreon and get to see some of the great stuff we do because... The Patreon is a lot of great stuff on it, and I'm really proud of the work that we do there. It's good stuff. Do you do you have the same song that plays on all of your episodes, like that's at the start? Yes, I do. Wow. So that's another really weird thing. So you you gave a, gave me access to your entire um, album, and you you yes, were like, oh, right. you can use whatever. That's the song yeah. I picked for the episode I did. Oh, there you go. That's that's yeah. It's a great. It's, I mean, it's an instrumental, which is great, and it has that big driving guitar. So it's a it was great just it was perfect. Thing. I was like, this is a great like. And one of the things that me and Katie we kind of argue on because she I'm the dreamer, one hundred percent. I'm the dreamer, and she's the one that goes, "Hey, sure. stop being dumb. This is what we really need to do." <laughs> I would play intro music for three minutes if I could. I, I don't know why. I love it. So when I do the yeah. Bobcast, that's because I, I just want to do more podcasts. I wanted podcasts way more um, than I can. So I kind of created yeah. this just to talk to different people. And because it's sort of mine, I get to put long music on it. And that as soon as I heard it, I was like, oh, this is the first one. And that was the first long yeah. like intro that's that awesome. I had. 
Loved it. That's great. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. I appreciate that. Well, Chuck, thank you for coming on. I really, really appreciate it. And I hope that I have you back. Oh, dude, absolutely. I'm, I'm down anytime. I appreciate you having me. You got anything else you want to say before you go? No, that's pretty much it, man. Um, we have a lot of fun. Everyone support each other during these crazy times because uh, who the hell knows how this is going to go Yeah, <laughs> and how long we're going to be in this. So uh, everyone stay positive. Yeah, man. Stay safe. And for God's sake, stay away from your mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go tuck him in, and then I then, I'll, then I'll, maybe I'll do that. Awesome. Thanks, brother. Okay, there you go. Um, I want to say thanks to Chuck for being on the podcast. Such a such a good guy, and it was it was a blast talking to him. Make sure you check out his stuff at the Brad and Chuck podcast. Uh, check out our stuff, the Bob and Katie Show dot com. Uh, hang around, listen. There's all kinds of episodes in, in a time where we're going to be going anywhere. This is the kind of stuff you should be doing. So hit play, enjoy yourself, laugh a little bit. We're going to make it. We're going to get through this. Until next time, enjoy yourself and stay safe.